It's yeah. Ben Gilroy here from Direct Democracy. Okay, I'm here with Ben Gilroy. Uh, ben, can you tell me how you got started right. with democracy, if that's okay? Sure, yeah. I mean, we went around the place and we start um, doing videos where we were protecting families from the sheriff coming through illegal banking activity and stuff like that. And then we were helping business people with sheriffs for receivers and, you know, um, sheriffs for rates and just the whole thing has gone crazy. And the only people that actually broke the law in any of this has been the bankers. And they have been bailed out. They have got the money. So I don't know what more they want, unless yeah. it's an asset grab. So, but while we were going around doing this, we realized that basically it was a, um, uh, we were putting out fires. And we realized that this has to be changed politically. And while we have decided to step into the murky world of politics, we are hoping to keep it honest by doing it with direct democracy. Okay. It'll have a good showing, you know. Can you explain what direct democracy is for people who don't know? Sure. Direct democracy was a, a system that was in our first constitution. It was a protection left by our grandfathers who obviously fought in civil war and stuff uh, and um, got our freedom from the Brits. But basically what it was was that you could... Um, call a referendum on any subject provided you gathered so many signatures I think the, the, it was 75,000 signatures they looked for at that time that prevented the calling of referendum for silly things like you know everybody should wear pink shoes and this sort of stuff um, the Swiss have it and obviously you know Switzerland is a very rich country it is run for the people by the people um, they have the highest standard of living probably in the world and their services are among the best in the world the, it costs them 36 percent of their gdp because everything is open and transparent with tenders from government however in our country we pay almost 68 percent of our gdp and we have some of the worst services in the world i mean people dying on trolleys that work all their lives that's how we treat our old people now Okay. Tell me what kind of canvases you're getting. Sure, I mean we've been getting great support locally and nationally from canvassers. Um, like the, the guys from Waterford would come up early in the morning and they canvass all day in the cold and that. And my brother-in-law just happened to say to me yesterday, who were the two guys canvassing for us in Rathout? And I said, there were just two guys that arrived, they were business people, they liked what we were doing and they wanted a canvas. And he said that he just said fair play to them. I'll use the proper word what he said. But anyway, he said fair play to them. He said, he said standing there all day in the freezing cold. And when I told him that they actually drove down from Donegal early that morning and stayed there, like he had to make a flask of soup and come around to them because he just could not believe people would do that. But then I told him that the weekend before, we had people up again from Waterford and Cork and these areas, but the lads from Donegal actually drove up early Saturday morning, canvassed all day in the wet and cold, slept in the office in sleeping bags, canvassed all day Sunday and went home. And What's inspiring this, do you think? They just recognise that they see this maybe as the answer because in Ireland, look, if there was a gold medal for complaining, we'd get it. Mm. I mean, we're terrific at complaining. Even on the doors, you'll see, ah, you're all the same. Ah, I wouldn't do anything like that. And to be getting some of that response too. And I always say, look, don't tell the guy who's doing it. Don't interrupt him by saying it can't be done mm -hmm. <laughs> when he's out doing it. So so that I th think that's what inspired them, that there's a real change here and they see it. And they respect, I suppose, me from, because they know my background of mm. where I came from, to, to prominence. If you like, this isn't uh, something we planned. But you're getting people from all walks of life. All walks of life, because I think they know there was no big plan to do any of this. Mm. You're just moving with the earth and this is the way it's guiding you, if you like. So that's what we're at. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to change the system and let the people have their say? No. no. The right democracy is great until it's confronted with reality. And why do you think the Swiss are still a wealthy country and everything works there? Because Fianna Fáil were never in government in Switzerland. <laughs> and if they were, they'd be like us today. Yeah. Exactly, they'd be like us today, bankrupt.
In a country with direct democracy, people can participate directly in politics. Everyone can help decide how the state, the cantons, and the communities are organized. In the whole of Switzerland, residents vote on average four times a year on various issues concerning their community, their canton, or the whole of the country. For example, they can vote on whether to have a new school built in the village, on how the canton should produce its electricity, or on the state old age pension plan. In addition, every four years the people elect the 246 members of the National Parliament, which consists of two chambers. The House of Representatives, representing the people, and the Senate, representing the cantons. This system gives less populated cantons more political weight. Parliament makes laws and elects the national government, which consists of seven members of various parties. People can overturn laws made by the parliament by launching a referendum. If they manage to collect 50,000 signatures within 100 days, the bill has to be voted on by the public. The People's Initiative enables citizens to make alterations to the Swiss Constitution. To hold a public vote on an initiative, 100,000 signatures have to be collected within 18 months. Okay, I am here with Raymond Whitehead, uh, founder of Direct Democracy Ireland. Um, I was just wondering how you got the idea for Direct Democracy Ireland? Well, I got the idea from uh, my experience of living in Switzerland when I was young as a, and, and working there and studying there as a student. And um, uh, I, it was a bit of a culture shock and the, the power that people had. It was such a contrast to in Ireland where people just shrug their shoulders and go, what can we do, it's the government. You know? mm. And uh, But the people there know, they, they are the government, they are partners in the political process. And um, so that's where the idea came from really. You know? okay. yeah. mm. And that's not to say we need to emulate everything about the Swiss model, but the, the whole idea of giving people a say in their own politics, it's empowering, it's enlivening, it's energizing for people. And they do become more involved and they, be, as a result, become more responsible. So when you give people something that's of value, they tend to, um, you know, work with it. Now, when you empower people and give them a certain amount of control of their own lives and mm -hmm. their own immediate environment, they tend to respect that generally. There's always going to be a few, one or two, but overall, people uh, don't descend into misery and, and uh, apathy, you know, which we're in. I mean, that's the, we're seeing the result of being powerless as a people and having decisions made above our heads. Your party was set up in November, I believe, of last yes, year. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we, we registered. We, the, it, I set this up uh, about four and a half years ago. Mm. And um, we became registered as a political party officially last November. Yeah. This is not real democracy. You know, people vote them in for a particular reason, then they go and do the very opposite. You can't call that democracy. I mean, Phil Hogan is a case in point. Phil Hogan was elected by the people of Ireland. Mm -hmm. The people of Ireland sent Bill Hogan a very strong message when he uh, said he was imposing property charges. And he turned around and said to them, if you don't do what you're told, I'll criminalise you. Yeah. And if I can't criminalise you because the Data Protection Act will not allow me to criminalise you and get your details to criminalise you, I will change the law in order to criminalise you. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't sound like democracy to me, that sounds more like Stalinism. So, you know, we don't have real democracy. We are being told what to do. So, how can you call that democracy? 80% of our laws are coming from Brussels now. We have no say in our, in our uh, financial matters. Our resources have been sold off from under us. These resources belong to the people of Ireland. Yeah. And yet, ministers have sold them out without consulting the people of Ireland. Mm. Our forests are in line for being sold off again. Are we being consulted? They belong to the people of Ireland, to mm. us. Mm. And we have no say in any of this. So you can't call that democracy, really. You know? okay. A representative democracy is really an excuse for democracy. You know? okay. 
uh, explain to me just who you are and how you're involved with this? Uh, I came across it on the internet by accident while perusing maybe some of the political sites before the 2011 general election. Like a lot of other people, despairing as to where we were going. What would the, the government we had obviously had to go, and were the replacement going to be any better? I personally felt they were going to be the very same, and that has proven to be the case. Um, I came across Raymond Whitehead, who was interested in founding this party. Um, we met several times in Dublin, groups of six to twelve people, all with basically the same <coughs> ideas, but coming at it from slightly different ways. Um, but all with the same uh, central theme was that representative democracy had failed, we're not being represented, and it's not a democracy anymore. And the only way to get a democracy back is that the people will have an ongoing say in, in what's been done to them, basically. I met Ben and Johnny and a few of the current members of DDI down at an eviction prevention in Leash, um, where the famous Constitution Hall Sheriff video was, was shot uh, that, that uh, you know, introduced Ben to, to a lot of people. So from there really I just uh, met the guys a few times. And There's a lot of us around the country who have seen for a long time but there's a very big problem uh, dead ahead. And it's not even dead ahead now, we're in the middle of it. And Can you explain uh, what the direct democracy is to people who may not be aware of it? Yeah, okay, well, like, direct democracy, uh, since the, the concept of direct democracy is getting introduced to people in the media now via Ben and via uh, the DDI uh, campaign, Mideast, East, uh, at the moment, there's a lot of, there's some confusion about what direct democracy is. Some people saying that direct democracy is mob rule and it's pure, pure democracy and never work. Um, what, what DDI is talking about when they say direct democracy is nothing new, it's a return to what we had in our original constitution. Uh, there was two, two articles in that constitution that allowed people to have the final say on whatever happens in the country and the people to initiate, uh, um, come up with good ideas basically. You call it initiate legislation or come up with ideas say why don't we do this, it makes sense. Do enough people agree, yes let's do this. It's quite simple really. And the third power is the power of recall. So if politicians or elected representatives are not doing what they're supposed to do, they can be that can be addressed, they can be stopped, they can be recalled. Some people are saying we sacked them. I mean, and other people are saying that's a problem, you know, it's a bit draconian, higher and fire. But that's just semantics. It's a question of is an elected representative doing what they're supposed to be doing? If they're not, it can be addressed. Bring them aside and go, you're in breach of your contract or whatever it may be. The concept is basically simple. It's 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 not creating a pure democracy, which is mob rule. It's constitutional, the same as our country is now, but it's returning three very important things that were already in the constitution, which would prevent this disastrous situation we're in at the moment. So it's not a huge dramatic change, although it can be, because if the people have the final say, that means that uh, actions like the sale of forestry, the giveaway of resources, the bailout, they wouldn't have happened in the first place because the people in the positions that made those decisions would have known that they would have been held accountable. As it is, nobody's been held accountable. It's a joke. So, like, at the moment we have representative democracy, but it's just a label. It's not representing anybody except vested interests. It doesn't represent me, it doesn't represent anybody. Could you explain to me about the Constitution and what direct democracy Ireland are arguing for with the Constitution? Well, under our first constitution, the founding fathers of the Irish Free State gave the people of Ireland the power of referendum. So if there was something you wanted to change, or something, if the government were doing something that the people of Ireland didn't like, or it was against the wishes of the people of Ireland, then they could step in. If you got 75,000 signatures, a referendum had to be called, and whatever it was that uh, the people were concerned about. And uh, this was a safeguard put in by the founding fathers against abuses of power by the government. And it's a, a very practical thing. Uh, it's not that you'd be having a referendum every day of the week, but it means where there were serious issues, um, one had that power to step in and, and say, not in our name. So um, the first government that got in, which was a kind of coalition of sorts, um, took it out of the constitution against the wishes of the people. Because when they did that, 
uh, there was 100,000 signatures, just short of 100,000 signatures got against what they were doing. Really? Yeah, and they were ignored, completely ignored. Uh, so this was, you know, really something... I can't say it was illegal, it was what we call in Ireland cute horrorism. Yeah. You know, because what they did was, they were supposed to, having made that change to the constitution, they were supposed to obviously consult the people and put it to a referendum as to whether they could do that or not. So what they did was, under the first constitution, Article 50 allowed them to make amendments, not changes, but amendments. So they amended the two year period, two and a half year period, that they had to put it to the people to eight years. So they said, we're not denying you your right to have a referendum, we're just putting it off for eight years. Okay. So we'll come. But at the end of that eight years, what did they do? They extended it by another eight years. <laughs> right. So effectively, they denied the people of Ireland their right to have call a referendum on this. Now, when the second constitution came in, and we got our freedom from Britain, totally, um, in the second constitution was inserted basically that they, to paraphrase it, that the government retained that right of referendum. Okay. Now they never had that to retain in the first place because we never got to vote on it. Okay. So there's a big question mark over that. So we want these powers put back into the hands of the Irish people. Okay. Um, what do you think about young people and um, voting? I really would love to see them getting involved. And I see. Uh, in this election campaign I've seen a lot of young people going around dropping leaflets for Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. Maybe they're getting paid for it, I don't know, but uh, they have, uh, both have a youth organisation anyway, you know, mm. but just blindly, a lot of those will be just blindly following what their parents done and all that. And I have to confess I've done it myself for years. Um, what's needed, I suppose, is, is an alternative, because at the moment, People see the last government was a, turned into a shambles in the finish. Maybe it was because they had done three ter three terms or something, I don't know. But then they're replaced by someone who's just turned around and done exactly the same thing. Hmm. And they shout over and back at each other that it's your fault and no, it's your fault and you've done it before and now it's our turn and all the rest of it. And can you blame people for walking away from that okay. when there's no alternative? But now there is an alternative. And like I said, they're here to stay. Okay. Because we have to. It's as simple as that. A lot of people walk away from politics, and mm. that suits the established parties. They're there. they're happy enough with that. But to not vote is actually you are voting for more of the same. So if you want to change it, you have to get out there and vote. Um, they're quite happy with the system as it is. Swapping power every five years. Sometimes they make it two terms, um, but the end result is the same, they're not serving the people who have elected them, they're not serving 90%, at least 90% of the people are not being represented properly. Uh, How could you encourage younger people to get more involved in politics? Do you well think? actually, if we were just talking about this today, there was two 18 year old girls came into us in the space of about 20 minutes in Ashburn mm. and said that they wouldn't have voted only before we were running and they're now going to vote. So I think, you know, by engaging them and saying, look, you have a say. Mm. Every say on this door here that we're knocking on is important. They all have a say. Now, while we all, all won't agree, I mean, that's the nature of the beast with mm. democracy. I mean, democracy has its flaws. As I always said, democracy is 10 idiots telling one genius he's wrong. <laughs> but however, I believe in wisdom of the crowd. You yeah. know, there's a thing called wisdom of the crowd. It, it's what sets price and commerce on a certain product. It works very well. Um, but I believe a direct democracy would run the system better, without a doubt. I mean, take a look at Switzerland, take a look at us. How can direct democracy Ireland help get young people more interested in politics? Um, well, as we get more organised, and, and again, we're, we're a new party and we have a lot to deal with in mm. relation to that. Um, we haven't been as organised as we, we might be, and we don't have the funding and the, the history that the, the mainstream parties have and the, the machine that they have. But uh, we have people approaching us now who want to, um, us to address students in, in colleges and schools. So we're going to have to look at that and try to get the message out there to young people. Because young people are probably more disenfranchised than older people think you can do. But there is. We, you have an alternative now. So, so even if a young person was going um, 
or Fianna Fáil have, you know, not listened to me or Fianna Gael are not addressing my issues, so I won't vote. That's actually not a good thing for a young person to do. In terms well, not, of not now that we have a new political party called Right Democracy Ireland, um, mm. because, you know, now you have the opportunity to put the power back into your own hands. Mm. And that's something that no other political party in the history of this state has done. We're the first one. The first political party in the history of the state that wants to give power back to the people because the people involved in this party are the people, are just ordinary people. Okay. All right. Dermot Murphy from Direct Democracy and he's going to tell us a bit about why he's here at RTE today. I'm here with RTA because they won't give any fair coverage to direct democracy. They're a new party that's starting up in Ireland, a party for the people, and it's a party that's based on how it works in Switzerland. And we feel that RTA is not giving Ben Gilroy from direct democracy proper coverage. He's good, they are giving coverage to all the other candidates in the elections, but not to Ben Gilroy. And we, I feel that this is unfair, and that's why I'm here today. And um, Bel Ben Gilroy is going to be running in the Meath elections coming yeah. up now, the by-elections. Yeah, he's already out today canvassing. They're very busy. They're getting a very good response at the doorsteps. And everything is looking good. So we're just hoping that we can get him in and hopefully get change in this country as soon as possible. Because but these politicians are not working for us, you know. 80% of our laws are coming from different countries. Directdemocracy.com or directdemocracy.ie. And, and um, they're on Facebook and, and, on Facebook and Twitter as well. As well. Twitter as well yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And do you feel that you're getting fair media coverage or not? <laughs> I know you must know the answer to that question and you've asked. Um, no, we're not. But having said that, there have been some that have been very good to us. LMFM radio have been very good to us and um, some of the newspapers, but obviously the controlled media and uh, RTE, I, I include in that. You see, RTE were told that they were the state broadcaster. And they got confused. They thought it meant broadcaster for the state. <laughs> and that's where they got confused with that. But no, the whole thing has been contrived. I mean, and if you watch the actual prime time debate, it's just the same old, same old crap that actually put, stops people coming out voting. I mean, if they had something new and fresh, like a new political party with a change of system that the real groundswell of people on the ground want we could have actually won this election but i'm speaking now obviously on the eve of the election and i don't think we've a snowball chance in hell because of that however we just couldn't get to everybody on the ground um, because we're a small organization right now uh, with no money how uh, did you find the media coverage in the run-up to the uh, mead by election well, locally I thought it was quite good and, and very fair. Mm. The local media have been very good to us all over the country. But um, uh, in, in the national media I think it was uh, abominable and I think it was actually disgraceful because uh, we were, uh, the people of Ireland were given the impression that we were absolutely no hopers and that a vote for uh, Direct Democracy Ireland was a wasted vote, and we can see now it wasn't, despite the lack of coverage that uh, we got. How did you find maybe the Sam Smith TV3 coverage? Or? Well, the Sam Smith Vincent Brown coverage of uh, DDI was, I think it was shameful, mm. and it was disgraceful in fact, because he made a public statement uh, that he had as good a chance of getting in, uh, getting elected as the two candidates they had on the show which was Direct Democracy Island and the Green Party. And um, uh, I don't believe that's really allowed under broadcasting standards to make public statements like that mm. because the, the impression he gave and the statement he made was really a vote for Direct Democracy Island uh, was a wasted vote. Mm. And he had no right to make that judgment. Vincent Brown, though, maybe two years before, was quite supportive, though, uh, I think, of direct he was, marketing. and he, he started um, talking about giving power back to people to have a vote on certain things, like the, the, the promissory note and the, the bailouts and all these mm. kind of things. And because it's the people of Ireland's taxes, and they should have a say in where they go. But um, we're not consulted on anything by the government. Mm. Decisions are made above our heads. So, um, no, Vincent Brown was... Um, uh, I would like to have seen a follow through to that, but for some reason it was cut short. And it was cut short directly after he actually mentioned the, the name, direct, uh, the word direct democracy. I've seen that. Uh, and short, immediately it was almost like he was taken off in another direction. Okay, and 
Pat Kenny, I believe, hadn't even heard of you guys, was saying Pat you were Kenny an Pat Kenny has ignored it, and in fact, I actually approached Pat Kenny after a Frontline program one night, and I mentioned direct democracy to him, and he completely dismissed it, and quoted California as um, a failed sort of state, if you like, which I found extraordinary, because the difference, while California is a direct democracy, it is still ultimately subject to the federal uh, government. Mm. and. Um, there is a difference between uh, California direct democracy and its origins and Swiss direct democracy. So, you know, he really needs to read up a little bit. And I'd, I'd recommend an article in The Economist called Origin of the Species. And if anyone wants to Google that, uh, The Economist and the Origin of the Species, they'll get the definition and the, the difference between Swiss direct democracy and California direct democracy. But uh, the news in me, gentlemen, is that uh, I seem to have almost as good a chance of getting elected as either of yourselves. You having the advantage, having declared yourselves. But uh, uh, Francis, the uh, or uh, yeah, the He's Greens, sixty, sixty-six to one. Yeah, they're tight odds. Mm. It's looking good for direct democracy as far as your 25 to 1 trans accord in yeah, well, Bar, so it, you're, uh, considering we you've started got at more a, than twice as much chance. Yeah, well, considering we started chance. at 100 to 1 last week, Sam, we seem to be going in the right direction and very fast. Yeah. Uh, direct democracy is growing quite well around the country. Um, we only launched just before Christmas, but the idea of it really appeals to the people on the doors because the people feel disenfranchised from the government. They don't feel the government represents them. And really, the truth of the matter is, the government does not represent the people. And there's real hurt and real pain out there. Like before, they would say to you, oh, there's pain, like this was cut and that was cut. But now you actually have, like a school teacher told me the other day, that she has noticed some children in, in school and they're actually, you know, asking others for some of their lunch. It has gone that bad. There's su two suicides a day in the country. That means before the election now there'll be 15 people dead before the election. I from bet, suicide. That's not the most upbeat campaigning no, it's not, that no, I've heard of. No, it's not. But, so the upbeat part, I mean, that's the disaster we are in now, and that's why people feel disenchanted. That's why there's anger on the door. So what we're getting on the door is that people are basically about to run you from the door until you say, we're a new political party. I'm not a politician. Yes, well, I'm not a politician, thank God. But the, the thing about direct democracy is it gives everybody a say. But what's the difference between you and running as an independent? Okay, I could have ran as an independent. It would have been a much easier route for me. But I took the more difficult decision to set up a political party, not because there's such a void for one in Ireland at the minute, but I wanted to set up one that would make real change. So I could have done it the easy way, but independents don't really have a say. And, and that's the feedback we were getting, that independents vote is a wasted vote. Um, so with direct democracy, what direct democracy does is it basically gives the power of a referendum back to the people. We've had it in our first constitution until they removed it. Mm -hmm. And one would have to ask why it was removed from the and constitution. And is there, a, is there an organisation that would run to other constituencies right around the country? Oh, there is, yeah. Idea. Direct democracy, um, Donegal is set up. Direct democracy, um, Carla was setting up. Direct it's democracy, like a franchise, then, what, on, Yeah, on well, more or less. I mean, but that's, that's democracy, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. but at least absolutely. people feel... John, because one of the problems of having been in government is that everybody's going to hold, hold, hold it up and say, yes, there was no regulation in the banks, mm -hmm. but you guys were in government at the time, and the government did not hold the financial institutions uh, or the banks to account. You know, there were bad economic policies in Ireland, but it had its international context, and that has to be considered, that there was a limited amount you can do when you're de completely dependent on foreign credit flows. And you can only deal, you know, we can deal in, in ideal world solutions, but you, 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 you have to deal with the situation you're in and you only do the best job that you can with it. And that's what we did, I believe. Well, you might have heard there in the background a lot of rustling and bustling. That was me shuffling paper and losing all your tweets and calls and so on. But anyway. And do you think the right to Mark Sarin are getting a fair crack of the whip in terms of media or not? Well, we've seen plenty of examples of that and I suppose whoever owns the ball is going to put it under their arm and go home with it. But in my opinion, RT has been manipulated. Uh, they even pretend to not have heard of them. Now, in an on-street discussion yesterday, our Taoiseach has heard of direct democracy and has heard all about the uh, policies behind it 
and tried to denigrate it, of course. But Pat Kenny apparently hasn't heard about it. He doesn't really know what it's about at all. He was asking De Declan Ganley about forming a new party when there's one under his nose, which are having a very active campaign in this election. Um, could possibly win it, let's hope. But uh, a good showing will be the springboard for the future anyway, you know. I think they're definitely going to finish ahead of the Labour candidate. Uh, he'll put his own spin on that and say it's because he's uh, introducing unpopular policies to save Ireland from um, Fianna Fáil's disastrous administration the last time. Is the main issue uh, canvassing on the door? OK, well, the truth about canvassing on the doors is the other parties are lying to you. Mm. There's terrible hostility out there. People are saying, oh, no, we're getting good reaction on the doors. They're lying. They're not because mm. we're not even getting good reaction because mm. they think that we're them. <laughs> OK, OK. And I mean, from, from short of doors slammed in your face and threats of boiling water being thrown out and setting the dog on you, I mean, so they're lying, you know, because that's the art of politics anyway. But I mean, that's not the truth. Uh, the truth is that the minute we kind of have to say just before the door slammed, oh, I agree with you, but we gave out enough and we're doing something about a new political party, mm. then there's a total change of attitude, you know. Mm. So so it's a pity we didn't get national media coverage because I really think we could have caused a huge upset in the by-election. Do you think you caused the debate, though, to happen for a direct market? as a result of you running for election? Oh yeah, I mean I think we've done great things for direct democracy and as I said we had a debate on LMFM and we actually had two live debates on LMFM and the first debate I had we really went at them, you know uh, about their broken promises and they kept saying they had a they'll have a strong voice and that's lying to the electorate, they won't have a strong voice mm. and people will probably see this after the election and you'll see there'll be no strong voice I mean, I kept saying if they were, had a strong voice maybe they're on the wrong show, they should have been going for X Factor Okay. Um, they're under a party whip system so they'll be told you know shut your mouth this is what you stick to and that's the end of it okay. and, and that's the facts so so we thought then by the time the second interview live interview came around they would really be ready to get us mm. you, see, you can't really argue against direct democracy because if I say to you the people should decide well if you say no I'll decide for the people see that's not that's going to be a popular message yeah. so our message is popular let the people decide you want to be able to let the banks ask the people you know okay. and uh, can you tell me do you think direct democracy ireland has got fair media coverage well no i'd have to say no um you know it, it, over the last three weeks uh in the election campaign which is a very short campaign uh has to be said uh it was it was called very uh, a short notice the media coverage has been next to none I mean, there's been a few notable, you know, good, good exceptions to that. The Irish Daily Mirror ran a nice article, um, which was great of them. The Mead Chronicle's been running good articles. There's been some stuff in the journal.ie. Um, the papers haven't been too bad. There hasn't been much in the main broadsheets. We actually had a guy from the Irish Independent ring up here one day, uh, and the only thing he wanted to know was why there was a poster up just in Mead West, just over the border, and not in Mead East. He was very worried about that, uh, but he didn't ask anything else about the rest of the election. But the main culprit of bias, has to be said, um, seems to be the TV stations. Uh, State Broadcaster, RTE, has just ignored DDI and Ben pretty much completely. Um, Primetime was on last night. Uh, they had the four main candidates on, um, and they didn't have the rest, including Ben. They had four party candidates on and the, you know that there's other party candidates who weren't included Ben, the Workers Party uh, candidate and a lot of independents. Um, so you would have to ask, you know, there, there's two things they could have done. It's a by-election. Uh, one, they should uh, maybe not cover it at all. Uh, you know, you could, ex you could understand why they do cover it because it, it should be, or you'd expect a barometer of public opinion nationally. So you could see why they'd cover it, but then they should cover all of the, all of the candidates. Um, their excuse on that, and it's the same excuse the other TV station uses TV3, is they go on the percentages of who voted for who the last time. But if that's the case, how is anybody new ever going to come in? Uh, I'd seen on your Facebook page, the BBC have expressed an interest in making yeah. a documentary. Yeah, ironically enough, the BBC, a uh, 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 broadcaster from another country, have expressed great interest and they want to come over and do a documentary. Um, so that's that's going to happen now sometime over the next uh, short few weeks. And Max Kaiser has been interested for yeah, RT as well. Max Kaiser Ben has been over to uh, to do a show with Max Kaiser before. Um, 
and uh, he, he has been in contact with them a few times, so they're very interested. Yeah, international media is interested. Okay, thank you. Um, do you feel Direct Democracy Ireland have got a fair crack at the whip with the media, or not? Um, not one bit whatsoever. It's, uh, since I started working as a facilitator for Direct, Direct Democracy Ireland, I, I've been horrified uh, by the carry-on of the, the national broadcasters. Um, I'm And we'll talk about Fine Gael in just a moment and indeed Labour and the problems that they're facing in, in the wake of that result. But you will have seen Ben Gilroy in that report. Ben is with us this evening. You took everybody by surprise coming forth. Yeah. Tell us about um, Direct Democracy Ireland, your new party. Okay, we launched a new party just before Christmas time and it's been going very well throughout the country. Um, there's a disconnect really from the people and a lot of the main parties now and that's what we find at the door. I mean, there's an over 60% non turned out today. And they just feel what disillusioned. Are you, what are you selling, Benny? What's different we're, about you? We're selling direct democracy. That was in our first constitution. And it's basically that the people should decide on major issues. So, like, if you want to bail out the banks, you ask the people. And the people feel disenfranchised and disconnected from the government. They haven't been consulted in one of the most probably the biggest issue to hit the country since the foundation of the state. So and I mean, they haven't I mean, been the name direct democracy sounds quite left wing. Is that where you would put yourself on no, the political no, spectrum? No, we're, we're neither left nor right. I mean, I, I believe we're very much centre. Um, it's, it's a very simple idea. You just basically, on major issues, you ask the people. It was in our first constitution. The people, you let the people decide. You want to bail out the banks? Let the people decide. You want to sell off our assets? Let the people decide. Mm -hmm. The people should have a say. Otherwise, it's not dem democracy or anything like it. And the people like that message on the door. When it comes to Europe, are you Eurosceptic? Because I know you've expressed support on your Twitter page for Nigel Farage and the UKIP party. So where do you stand on Europe? No, no the only thing I said about uh, Nigel Farage was that when he, when he put a video out about respect the Irish vote on the Lisbon, I actually enjoyed that video and I stand over that. I think that was a fabulous video. And I mean, democracy, you know, when you ask the people and you go wrong answer, mm and go and ask them again I mean that's it that's a little bit worrying <laughs> I mean you don't come up with the right answer we're gonna ask you again that's a nonsense you know and you've also been associated with the free man movement are you linked no to that? I mean that's nonsense that you hear on on the on the internet I mean I don't know where they get that from but you've been involved in protecting people as you see it who yeah. are being evicted from their homes and you talk about um, those who turn up to evict people as being somebody who calls himself a sheriff. Now that would come, that sort of language would come from the free man movement, wouldn't no, it? No, I didn't do that. If you actually watch the video, there's none of that in it. That's what people say about me, I suppose, people who oppose what I do. I never used any language like that. All I said was in that video that when the sheriff came, he said he was the sheriff right he wasn't the sheriff he was the assistant sheriff because I have a problem when the sheriff is the registrar in the county deciding on somebody's house deciding they lose the house and then they step down and put on a sheriff's hat the same person and they go collect and make fees on that there's no separation of power there that's all I said and mm -hmm. that's I still stand by that there's nothing wrong with that yeah I suppose we're just trying to get a handle on, on who you are yeah, because you are course. such a such a new party and yeah. you have done very well I mean what happens now for direct democracy Ireland where do you take this Well, we go back into our recruitment stage I mean we were in a recruitment stage before this by-election this by-election probably became more of a hindrance than a help but of course every cloud is a silver lining and that's where we are I mean it was a chance to get our name out there but on the doors of course and from Donegal to Cork direct democracy is growing and we have a number of constituency offices open and it's going very well because mm -hmm. the people like having a say in politics rather than being dictated to. Do you link yourself to any other of the these new political movements that we have seen across Europe, Beppe Grillo for example? No, no, absolutely not. I've never been involved in any politics before, any free man movement, any of that nonsense. I actually think most of it's nonsense to be honest, but people will just say not things Not nonsense about enough though to run for election in, in this in this local... Yeah, but not as a free man movement. I mean, I only heard recently of what a free man movement was. I mean, we, we are direct democracy and, you know, people like that message of direct democracy and most people are kind of surprised it was in our first constitution and they like the idea of having a say on major issues. And is your aim to be a TD? Yes, obviously, I mean, that would be our aim mm. and to have a number of TDs in, in power till we try and basically 
get the people involved back in politics again, there's a huge disconnect. I mean, there was more than 60% didn't show up today, and it had nothing to do with the weather. Sorry, yesterday, nothing to do with the weather. I mean, it was actually a beautiful day. I drove around with speakers on top of the car trying to encourage people to come out and vote. Mm. <laughs> Direct democracy, though, can be a, a pretty brutal blood sport, if you like. I mean, holding people to account is fine, but if you're saying you do something that your constituents don't like, you're out. You get booted out pretty much immediately. Yeah, yes, it does have recall on it, but I think, you know... <laughs> Like, if I was elected in Mead East and I come back to the people and there's an important bill to be maybe voted on in the House, you, you put the pros and cons of that to the people of Mead East. Is that feasible, though, to do that in, in it, most it, instances, that you would is. go back and have I local mean, meetings? It is. I mean, we're in the day of technology now. I mean, you know, you can send trillions of dollars online. I'm sure you can vote online. And I'm not talking about the voting <laughs> machines or that fiasco. But, I mean, we can send trillions of dollars online. I'm sure we can vote online quite easily. All right. How did you feel about the prime time um, coverage the day of the election? I thought it was very good, and I thought uh, Ben got to say his piece about direct democracy very well, and uh, no better person to do that than Ben. You know, he is a great spokesperson for direct democracy Ireland, and leader, which he is. And do you feel that the media coverage has changed as a result of the people having their say with the votes, or not? It has changed, and we've got a lot more coverage now in the national media. Mm. We were in the Irish Times on Saturday. Uh, following the election and in um, the uh, Mail on Sunday and uh, numerous other uh, journals and the journal.ie did an excellent article on this as well. I think the so Independent as well. And the Independent, yeah. yeah. So we've got a lot of coverage since then and we'll be getting a lot more because they now recognise that we are a force to be reckoned with. We're not just, you know, a disparate group of, um, you know, unknowns because we are uh, we have great support on the ground now. And what's the next step for direct democracy? Next step uh, for direct democracy is we go back on the route that we were on, which was basically a recruitment stage and setting up um, constituency offices around the country. Mm. This has probably been more a hindrance to the build-up of direct democracy mm. than a help. But having said that, it has given us... We have arrived on the political map, if you like, because of this, and we have got some good media attention. And in general, the consensus, even from the other parties, has been that we have run a very good campaign. It has been said to us on all sides that we have had great presence out there that you mm. could not notice, but we were there. What do you think of the democratic system in Ireland at the moment? Well, it's not democratic mm. at all. I mean, if you actually think the way it works, I believe direct democracy is a better form of democracy than mm. representative democracy. I mean... Like, they're saying, basically, they know better than you, so they'll represent you in your decisions. Mm. Well, OK, uh, we have the banks that have ruined the financial system. We have a government that has ru ruined trust. We have a, uh, a church that has ruined faith. And we have... Um, what's the other one I say on that, Johnny? Courts that have ruined Oh, justice. yeah. And we have, a, we have a legal system that has ruined justice. OK. There's not much left. And uh, we also have the banks that created the mess. We've taken the money off the people and paid them back. And we have children going hungry now in this country, in a country that's rich in assets. You know, we should be the organic food centre of Europe, and yet mm. one in four children go to bed hungry. That's representative. Not, that's how they've represented us. Anyway, can you tell me uh, what's the next step for Direct Democracy Ireland? Well, um, for as far as I would be concerned, anyway, uh, we're we're here for the long haul. It's it's a countrywide organisation, which can only grow in popularity. I think to the, what has happened in Mid East in the in the space of a short few months um, is an example to what can be done. Um, I think we see the, the an election there recently in Italy where a new party basically took twenty five percent of the vote. Uh, people have had enough basically. I've been misrepresented, so it's time to take it back for themselves. And uh, can you tell me what is the next step for Direct Democracy Ireland? Well, the next step is just to continue to grow. I mean, Direct Democracy Ireland is, is only very new. The party only launched in November. Um, there's people, including myself, and we've only just got involved over the last few weeks. Um, we're very excited about the potential because it's something actually new. And as that famous quote goes, there's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Um, if you have an idea whose time has come and, and people want it and they can see the logic of it, um, it'll take off like wildfire. It seems to be um, doing that already. 
So the next step is to, is to grow, uh, spread out over the country. There's branches opening up in, uh, in all the different counties. And um, to, to work together, really, to make this a reality. Because we need it. We need it. Our, our country is in an emergency and we need a solution. A very big thing that's different in this age than any other age before is the internet, the, the availability of information. Iceland has created a website called Better Reykjavik, some people in Iceland have, where people put forth proposals, why don't we do this, why don't we do that, and people debate it and vote it up. And if it's a good idea and people approve of it, uh, they put it to their government and the government um, looks at it and hopefully implements it. Now that's a step in the right direction, it shows what can be done. So there's a lot of possibilities with direct democracy, but the, the basic principle is that we're in charge. The people who own this country, which is all of us, are in charge of what happens in it. It doesn't mean we're going to uh, get involved in the minute of everything that happens and determine what type of door handles are on the doll. Nobody cares about that. But people care about where all the tax money is going to. So it's about us being in charge of our country. After that, we can sort everything else out. What is the next step for Direct Democracy Ireland? The next step for Direct Democracy Ireland, we're still on a recruitment drive. Um, we're still giving talks and meetings around the country. And next summer is the local elections. So we'll be hoping to gear up to uh, contest those elections. And of course, the uh, national elections. That's if there isn't a national election before that. Um, but uh, yes, we're, we're recruiting members and people hopefully to go forward to represent us in local and national elections. Well that was Ben Gilroy and there he goes on his campaign trail.